Hey guys, today we're driving the 2022 Honda Civic Si, and we're gonna talk about what this is like as a road trip vehicle. I just drove this to Nashville and back from Metro Detroit, about 1,200 miles total. Let's walk you around this real quick and we'll talk about what it's been like to drive on the highway for eight hours at a time. Um, I've gotta say, on first impressions, really great car. I always loved this Civic Si. I really enjoyed what Honda did in this 11th generation. They made some great changes. The chassis here is amazing. It's super fun to drive, handles great. A little bit on the stiffer side, but uh, as a daily driver, I think that's really where this car shines. It's fun enough to hustle on a back road, but as a car, as just a usable, functional vehicle to kind of do it all for the enthusiast, I think this is one of the best buys in the market. So as a road trip car, how does this stack up? Let's look at interior space. Let's look at storage volume. We have a pretty large trunk, plenty of room back here to put luggage gear we can fold down the rear seats if we need to put some longer items we do not get a spare tire but you can probably retrofit one in here uh, with an old spare from a previous generation honda civic there might even be a new part number that you can grab this foam piece comes out and you can just throw a spare tire back there no big deal knock on wood didn't have any issues this week in the back seat Again, we have a decent amount of space back here. Let's unlock these doors. Plenty of legroom for passengers, very comfortable seats. I'm five foot 10, seated behind myself. I have a lot of room back here. Nice visibility too, it doesn't feel too cramped. It's just a little bit spartan with features. We don't get any uh, climate vents. Uh, we only get one seat pack pocket. We get an armrest and a couple of cup holders, but that's about it. No heated seats or anything like that. Great interior in this new Civic. One of my favorite things about the entire car is just how functional and usable this interior space is. More on that in a minute. So the big surprise with the Civic Si this week as a road trip car was fuel economy. You can put 87 octane in this. 91 is recommended, but it does say 87 minimum. I was filling it up for about $31 in a tank, which is kind of unheard of now. Gas prices have started to creep down a little bit under $4. And I averaged over 40 miles to the gallon with a 73 mile per hour average speed on my way back. I was at my averages were between 37 to 40 MPG throughout the whole trip, depending on the tank. Um, and I was not hypermiling. I was just trying to get there in a good pace. I was between 75 to 85 miles per hour, depending on traffic flow and state and speed limits and all that stuff. And I got insanely impressive fuel economy in this SI. The fact that you can get over 40 miles to the gallon in this car without even trying, and this is the SI, this is the performance variant, is mind boggling to me. I think that is just fantastic. Let's talk about this interior. So these seats, very, very comfortable seats. Really supportive. Um, I feel great after driving eight hours in this. My back's a little bit wonky this week from mountain biking, and I was ultra comfortable in these seats, sitting in them all day, driving, no pain. I stopped once on each trip. So I did four hour legs, four hour legs, stopped once for fuel, and that was it. Um, and I got out and I didn't have any issues. So top marks for these seats, very comfortable. They breathe well too. This interior, is one of the best interiors on sale today. So we see it in the Honda Civic, we've seen it in the new HRV, we're seeing it in the new CRV, which is what I was driving to Nashville to test and drive. We'll see a video on that at the end of August. It's just so easy to live with this car. The controls, the button layout, the climate control, the cruise control settings, uh, just beautiful little tactility to the knobs and switches. Everything just falls to hand and it's so quick and fast to access what you want. There's a push button here for the trunk release. There's a button down here to access all of your safety settings. Um, you can enable or disable collision mitigation braking, lane keep assist, uh, blind spot monitoring. Very quickly, again, push of a button, change your gauge cluster brightness, push of a button. You've got a home button for your infotainment. Wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, though no wireless charger. So I've been using a cable connection all week. That's been fine. It was pretty reliable for me. 
Only once did I have a weird hiccup where it was connected wirelessly and I played music and instead of coming through the Bose system, it came through my phone. I was like, why does this Bose sound like crap right now? It's, it was actually just playing through my phone speaker. I reconnected everything and it was good to go. So a really nice integration with CarPlay, a responsive screen. Um, all right, let's take this for a drive and we'll talk about what it was like on the road. We get a few different drive modes in the Civic Si. Normal, sport, and individual. I spent 99.9% .9 of my time in normal mode. Throttle response is a little bit dulled. Engine sounds a little bit quieter. It was just a nice mode to cruise in. And I didn't feel like I needed the extra steering weight or response from the engine when cruising on the highway in this. So I really do like the inputs that you get out of this new Civic Si. This shifter is one of the best in the business. No hiccups all week. It was smooth. It was easy to engage gears, very clearly defined gates, and just a pleasure to row. It has the perfect weight, perfect throw. It's just a little bit notchy. I love it. The other highlight with this Si, steering feel and steering weight is just perfect for a front wheel drive car. I love the way this handles. Getting off the highway, cruising through a few back roads in Tennessee and Kentucky, this was a joy to hustle around. It's a little bit of a treat because we don't get good driving roads here in Michigan. Uh, our roads are just potholed, bumpy, and the only places we can enjoy cars are on entrance and exit ramps. This was really fun to hustle around a little bit. A lot of people have complained about rev hang on the new SIs. It's really not an issue except for red line shifts. If you're getting up into 5,000, 6,000 RPM and shifting, you're gonna get a little bit of rev hang. It's not as bad as the 10th gen SI was. That had insane amounts of rev hang. It's really not an issue that presents itself most of the time. Daily driving this car, just cruising around in it, driving normally, the revs drop very naturally, very predictably. Uh, it's only when you're hustling it when it just kind of puts a little bit of a damper on the driving experience. Let's put us into sport mode and show you what that looks like. We do have active rev matching. I've left that on pretty much all week in this SI. Rev limiter is 6,500 RPM, comes on a little bit early. Front diff gets us out of corners really well. This limited slip is just awesome. One of my only complaints is road noise. And you can hear it here on the highway. It's just a little bit loud. There's a little bit of wind noise and there's a lot of NVH from these tires. These Goodyear Eagle tires are just, they're loud especially above 80 miles per hour. They start to howl a little bit. You can hear it right there. Depending on the pavement surface that you're on, we're about to do a transfer from concrete to asphalt up here. Uh, it's not bad, it's livable, but I think one of the first things that I would change on this car if I were an owner is I'd swap out to a quieter set of tires. Cruising on the highway with adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, has been awesome this week. The uh, steering keeps you pretty well centered. The steering assist does a nice job keeping you centered in the lane. Occasionally, it's a little bit over to the right. If you're in the left lane passing semi-trucks, you get a little bit close to those trucks. Uh, so I've turned off in some of those instances, but 90% of the time, it's fantastic. These are systems that I don't typically use in heavy traffic, but I think it's great that Honda does offer them standard in a manual transmission car. Something that we had uh, an issue with a couple weeks ago, we had the CT5e Blackwing, and $100,000 car doesn't have adaptive cruise control. Here we get it in the Civic Si that's about 30,000 bucks. Pretty impressive stuff, and it works great. It took a lot of fatigue out of the driving experience over a full day. Uh, I left adaptive cruise control on probably about 70 to 80% of the time. And the rest of the time uh, I was taking over 
making my own kind of inputs, passes, and heavier traffic. Lane keep assist, I found myself using a lot more than I have in other vehicles just because of how easy it is to enable and disable. It negotiates curves pretty well. Uh, it's, a, it's a really nice system and it's not perfect, but it's good enough to use on a regular basis. If I need to take my eyes off the road for a second and change a track or playlist in my Spotify uh, app, I could do that very easily without worrying that the system was gonna kill me or something. One complaint that I do have with highway driving the blind spot monitoring system in the Civic is a little bit too conservative. You will have passed a car, it's already showing up in your rear view mirror, the light will still be on, you'll put your turn signal on, and it'll beep at you. You can turn that beep off, you can lower the volume of that beep, but I don't believe there's a setting to adjust the intensity or sensitivity of that system. Suspension. Suspension in the Civic Si is on the firmer side. If you're living in the Salt Belt, if you're living in a state like Michigan that has absolutely horrendous roads, lots of potholes, bumps, it might be a little bit stiffer than you want. If you're used to driving cars like the Fiesta ST or Focus RS or a GTI or a Veloster N, it's gonna be right in line with a lot of those other performance-oriented front-wheel drive cars. It's a little bit on the firm side, but overall, it's pretty well damped and the handling you get out of this chassis is absolutely phenomenal, especially on a stickier set of tires like these Goodyears. If anything, I kind of liked the suspension this week because it kept me awake. It was a little bit more engaging and exciting to drive this car. See what I mean? Not a lot of rev hang. And this is just a fun car to drive. It's fun to cruise on the highway. There's plenty of torque to kind of get you around slower vehicles. In sixth, I didn't have to do many passes shifting down into fifth or fourth. This cruises on the highway at around 30 to 3,300 RPM at 75, 80 miles per hour. And you can get into boost pretty easily at those RPMs and speeds and it's, it's fine. If you need some more passing power, one quick shift into fifth and you're you're gone, you're past people very quickly. This is a light car, even though it doesn't have a lot of power, only around 200 horsepower, it weighs 2,900 pounds. And this engine, this 1.5 turbo, loves to rev. So that kind of makes it a fun car to drive. The rev limit is a bit lower than you would expect. Redline is 6,500 RPM and that does come up pretty quickly, but you learn to deal with it, you learn to work with the car and its power band. and I found it to be a lot of fun to drive this week. The shifter is a highlight, the steering is a highlight for me. Uh, dynamically, this is just a really fun car to drive, and, and the fact that you can get over 40 miles to the gallon in this without really trying too hard is just amazing to me. Tedward was telling me that if you keep your speeds below 75, 74 miles per hour, you can get well into the 40s, mid 40s on the readout, and maybe even a little bit higher at the pump calculation. All right guys, well I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what it's like to road trip the 2022 Honda Civic Si. More comfortable than I was expecting, these seats are great. Suspension's a little bit stiffer, but it keeps you awake and keeps you engaged. Um, it's not punishing, it's never too harsh, and on roads, that are more representative of what we have in the rest of the country besides Michigan, the suspension's perfect. It's so worth it to get out on a back road and hustle this thing around. Uh, it is a genuinely fun car to drive and a great vehicle to live with on a daily basis. Maybe it's not the outright most fun or loudest or brashest front wheel drive performance car out there. It's not the quickest by any means, but as a daily, I think it's one of the best. You really can't go wrong with these new SIs. If you want a few more features, a little bit more luxury, and a few more amenities out of your daily, Honda and Acura offer the Integra. So, you know, you're gonna be paying a premium for that. We do get a little bit of a bargain base model here in the United States. It's a bit shame, bit of a shame that we don't get the adaptive suspension and the heated seats. But this week, I didn't miss them because it was 85 degrees in Nashville. These seats did breathe well. I've always liked a good cloth seat. They don't get as cold as leather seats do. And 
and in the warmer months they seem to breathe a lot better than the leather seat does too. So, you know, I'm not a huge fan of heated seats anyway. I kind of just turn them on for the first couple minutes and that's it. Uh, I found that in the winter time, it's not a huge deal with this SI though. That is something that's probably up to personal preference. Hopefully this has given you a good idea of what it's like to road trip the new 2022 Honda Civic Si. I really do think this new 11th gen Si just hits all the right marks for an enthusiast who wants a fun to drive daily and doesn't necessarily want to spend the extra money for an Integra, but also doesn't want a CVT in the standard Civic. Um, this manual is just a highlight. The dynamics of this new Si are fantastic. I think you could have some fun on this in the back road. Take it out to a track day, occasional autocross. It would be super reliable, very dependable, and it would serve you really well for road trips, daily use, it's spacious, it kind of just does it all. The only knock against this SI is that it is a little bit scant with features, but again, that's why the Integra exists. So we're gonna wrap things up there. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.